So church, open your hearts, be ready to be inspired this morning. Let's welcome Pastor Somanathan as he comes now. Thank you for being with us today, Pastor Som. Um, so as I referred to there, life hasn't always been easy for you, and I mentioned some of the things that you have faced. So I encourage you just to share with the people here this morning. Tell us a little bit about how you handled living in a war-torn country and how it felt at the time. Uh, first of all, I would like to share how God uh, intervened my heart. At the age of 17, uh, I was looking for a love which I do, couldn't find it from anybody. Because I lost my father at the age of 10. We are 10 in the family. We live in the eastern province, which is called uh, the place where I was, I came out, is Valachena. So Sri Lanka uh, is 72% uh, of the Buddhist, speak, Buddhist singular speaking people, and 14% of them are uh, Hindu people, and rest of them is uh, Islam and Christians. But I have gone to all the temples and uh, churches, but I couldn't find peace in my heart. I was looking for uh, love of the Father. I couldn't find from anybody because my father was a school principal and he was doing well, but my mother uh, never been to, only one day she has been to school and never been, after that, she never been to school. So she's not educated. So when my father died, we left out. We are 10 in our family. So my heart was longing for the love of the father. And then I couldn't find, and then I decided to suicide myself. So at that time, my sister, who was studying in North, Northern Territory, which is called Jaffna, and she came after her high studies, and she was a Christian, but she never shared with us. She was a secret Christian. And she was uh, every time locked the room and she's singing and praying, but no one knows what is she doing. But at that time only, I was really decided to suicide myself. And then I hang on the roof. The Lord prompted my sister to get into the kitchen side. And she saw that I was on the rope and I was... Within it, I mean, I was struggling. So my sister screamed, screamed out, and my brother came and escaped my life. Three months, I couldn't get out of the house because I had a mark on my neck, and I was so embarrassed, and uh, I couldn't get into the village. But within that three months, we had a huge cyclone in the uh, in the, our region, and all of our uh, assets and property, I mean, the house is uh, broken. And in the middle of that, the pastor who led my sister in the northern province, he and his family visited to our village to uh, do some relief work. And then he thought of my sister and came. They found our house, and they came to our house. At the time, no roof. We are just sitting in the uh, inside the wall. And then he was sitting and talking to us. And uh, suddenly he looked at me and said, Son, Jesus loves you. Do you know about the Lord Jesus? And he said, Why you are trying to finish your life? Because God has a purpose in your life. And Jesus loves you. And then I didn't, I didn't understand what he was talking about. One thing is hit my heart. This man doesn't know about me and what was going on in my life. And how could you see, tells me that I trying to finish my life? That was the hit. So I, I, my, I was uh, willing to listen to what he's talking about. And he was sharing about the love of Jesus. And he said, Father God loves you. That's what God has sent his son to deliver you from your sin, sinful life. And then he explained the gospel to me and said, I am a sinner, a sinner need a savior and the Lord. So he led me to uh, accept the Lord, and then I was born again. And I, after a few months, I was uh, baptized by the Holy Spirit. And then I had a urge in my heart. What is the benefit to live for this world? 
because nobody didn't love me since my father was died. But now I found the Lord and the father, the good father who loves me. So I gave my life to serve the Lord. I, I actually, later only I found that uh, I had a call of God, but beforehand I, I decided in myself, it is worth to serve the Lord rest of my life. And then I gave my life to serve the Lord. Then I went to uh, Western province, which is Colombo City, to study the Bible. So three, three years, I was, three and a half years, I was in the Bible school. And the, during that time, God is challenging my heart to get into our village to bring the gospel. Because our village is 100% Hindus, uh, Tamil-speaking people. And during the time, there was a uh, war was erupted, 1983, uh, from, from 1983, uh, last 30 years, we had a severe war. So within the war, the Lord took me to so many villages and to bring the gospel to our village people. And that time, my naked eyes has been seen, young children, teenagers, walking in the jungles with their huge machine guns. And that's really make me upset. Because I know being a, without the father, how difficult to come up in the life. But these children, they lost their parents, and they end up with the wrong elements, and they were trained for the fight against the government. So, this has really disturbed me. After I came, I station and then uh, seeking the Lord. The Lord was challenging my heart. And, and the scripture reminded me, that God is looking from the heaven to the, uh, down to the earth. And uh, uh, he is longing for the one who was appointed to death. Who can be delivered? So the Lord was challenging through the scriptures continuously that I have been delivered from the sin and shame and I have a hope and I have a future so why can't these children can't, can't have it so we were I call our small group of our believers and begin to pray and seek the Lord what we can do for these children every time once a month I used to go to those villages I travel by motorbike uh, 125, CD 125, it takes 11 hours to reach those villages. And middle of the war, we have seen so many dead bodies when we were riding those places. But God kept our life. And so many times we have seen pile of bodies burning on the roads. But God kept us. And he's so faithful uh, to uh, he, uh, his... Uh, God is so faithful in our life, even though so many times we were not faithful. I thank and praise God after being to those villages and giving small, small help to those children. Eventually, God made the ways for us to set up a children's home in those villages. And now we have a two, a one boy, a girl's home and a boy home. There's a two homes we are running. And 75 children has been uh, brought up into our children's home and they were educated and sheltered. And some of the children who passed out from the uh, high school, they are working in the legal departments and some are doing teaching, some are in the small businesses. And now we have 36 children at the moment in the children's home. And I think the, we've, we've got some photos of the homes, haven't we? Yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah, a few there. Just tell us yeah. a little bit more about what goes on there. And, the, and, the and uh, also, uh, the testimony is, all the children who came to our home, they were heathens. They never know about the Lord Jesus. They know millions of God from their uh, parents. But after being to our children's home, they have, been, they, they have a freedom to choose their God. We, we never force our staff, never force to them. But eventually, uh, when our staff are uh, calling for them to meditation, um, uh, 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 devotional prayer time and all, they were listening, they were hearing, they are hearing the, reading the scriptures. And every single kids, 
became born again. Spirit filled some of them. And also, there are many children has been baptized with water. And also, and the testimony is, our children, they love the Lord, they worship the Lord, they know they are God, who they are, who, who, who he is. And actually, at the moment, one of our uh, child uh, who was brought up in the children's home, uh, being uh, under training, and he's uh, uh, with the Bible school, and he is, his vision is to go back to village and uh, uh, plant the church. So when I go back, I am going to release him uh, for the weekdays to go back to uh, our village, uh, his village and to um, reach the community. And another, another about girl who is with us at the moment and preparing herself to go down to PNG to get uh, to train herself for the missions field. God is doing a wonderful thing with our children's yeah. home. I think what encourages me most about that is from a situation that, that seemed hopeless where Son was at the point where he almost took his life, that he's now become uh, that, that beacon of hope to so many kids. And, and you saw the, the, the pictures there of what's happening in the homes. Um, so earlier this year, we, uh, we opened the, the, the new centre there in Colombo. And many of you here would be aware, as a church, we've been giving, uh, from our missions giving, around $10,000 per year since 2010. We've been committed to that each year, um, giving towards uh, the building of that, um, along with many of our other uh, churches uh, uh, from the CRC who have been uh, supporting that. And it was very exciting for me personally, because I was involved back then in 2010 when we launched that here in Australia. And um, so it's great to see that up and running. But... That also had some, some opposition, didn't it? And you were telling me a story about one of your neighbours. Just share that with the people here this morning and what the outcome of that's been. By the grace of God, we are able to purchase the land in the 2000, year of 2010. From then, five years, the land was sitting right there. And we often, we get into the place and walk around and we're praying and praising God. We didn't have any opposition until we laid the foundation stone in the property. Because this center is middle of the Buddhist and the Hindu community. So when we began begin to put a foundation, the right next door of the family began to oppose us, opposed to build the building. So particularly the lady who was in, uh, very much into politics and also she the community leader of, of, of that community. And she has taken our contractor and the consultant to the nearly 25 departments to stop this building. Because she heard that we Christians have come here and to disturb the community. She has brought 25 different times the police with the big siren and all, like there is something is, you know, criminal activities taking place. That's the mentality of that lady, and she brought it. And we got to know. And then we call our church members to put up a time to time the fast and pray and seek the Lord to two, two things that we ask the Lord. One is, Lord, change her heart or shift her from this place. <laughs> so God answered the prayer. About we finished the building, she was continuously giving trouble, trouble to the contractors and the workers and our consultant and police coming and going. And But at the opening of our center, my heart was prompting, why can't I go to her house and invite her? Myself and my son took the invitation and went into her home. She didn't really expect that we will come to her home. And she was a little bit panicked. And then she asked us to come in. We went and we said, we are going to leave this center rest of our life. 
but we are going to be a blessing to the community. This place is going to be the CRC National Center, which we want to be a blessing to the community, to do the right thing for the community. And we, I, uh, we said to her, we want you to come for the dedication or the opening. Much reluctant, she received the invitation and said, okay, I'll come. She came, but she didn't want to identify with anybody. At the corner, she was sitting and she went back after the uh, dedication. So in a few days' time, there was a deadly dengue fever broke up all over Sri Lanka. Because of the stagnated water, the dengue is breeding very badly. So in our area, is badly affected. Few people died. And the Lord has given some insight to us to do something for this. We got together and we prayed and we decided to come out of the our, our church and clean up all the drainages around our area. And then we began, begin to um, clean up these, all the drainages of the roads with the shawl and the uh, wheelbarrow. This lady came out of her house and she joined with us. And then she became an advertisement to us. She was telling every house, these people have come to this place to bless us. This is going to be the church, which not accepted by the community, but because of this lady, God really used this lady as a tool to bring the news to the community. This is going to be the Christian church. These people are going to be the blessing to the community, and we need to support them. Believe me, once a month, we come together and do the same thing for the community. But the same day, in the morning, the community people come around to our building and have a meeting. And in front of the police high authority, police high authority come in the area police high authority, and also the village government appointed person who come for the meeting. And she was introducing all of her brothers and telling them, these people are the blessing to our community. I thank and praise God. The CRC National Center now has the identification with the community. And also, this is center is going to be the great uh, mission uh, center for, to train our people for the evangelism and church planters. And also, we are we're very quickly, I mean, the month of November, we are starting an intensive Bible uh, school program. So I really see how God is doing uh, wonderful things which he has called us to do in the nation of Sri Lanka and beyond Sri Lanka. Isn't that fantastic? And as Pastor Som was, was sharing that, I'm just conscious that, you know, there may be some of you here who, you, there are people who are opposing you, particularly in your ability to share the gospel and your witness. And, and I would say, learn from Pastor Som's example. Bless those people. Not, not enter into a fight in a natural sense, but bless them and watch Jesus uh, transform their hearts. Pastor Som, we're nearly out of time, but can you just share one minute? Um, we, we talked a lot about what's happening in Colombo, but there is land on the other side of Sri Lanka, which the CRC has. Just tell us very briefly what your heart and your vision is for that land there to see happen. God has given us this huge land, which is 15 acres. Sorry, the 17 acres. With this land, we want to uh, begin. A, we, we are going to uh, build a church in that property. And also, uh, we had a uh, sewing training school for the community people because that is the good tool for us to bring the gospel to the village. And also, we are heading for the uh, vocational training center. And part of the property is going to be developed uh, with the coconut plantation, which is going to be sustainable for the children's home uh, needs. Pastor Som, thank you very much. Let's put our hands together and thank Pastor Som.
And now from Ghana, Pastor John Botang from uh, Ghana in Northern Africa. Um, John has an incredible story as well. And he just in his upbringing, uh, this, the, the demonic influence that was there in his early life um, that he overcame. Um, when he felt called to ministry and going to minister in a particular area, the church he was in at the time uh, didn't feel that was right, didn't support him. Um, it cost him, and that's the cost of the call sometimes, it even cost him uh, his fiance at the time, who uh, I'll let John tell that part of the story. There is a cost to following the call of Jesus, and yet he was faithful in that. Uh, and now there is a work happening in Ghana, which is exciting. So let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor John as he shares. Pastor John, it's great to have you here this morning. Um, so it must be pretty tough growing up facing the kind of adversity that you did. Just share with us, give us a, a glimpse of what it was like, some of the adversity you faced, and yet how... Jesus overcame in your life. Share with the people. Thank you so much. Yes, um, growing up um, in a forest village, um, I, my grandfather was a very um, highly demonic um, king, um, had about 17 different kinds of shrine, a cultic uh, um, uh, thing he worshipped. And then my grandfather died, and my father supposed to inherit him. My father at this point had become a Christian, so he refused to, to take part. And then this spirit attacked my father and my siblings, and four of my sisters um, died mysteriously, um, just killed by these demons and, and powers. And then it got to my turn. I fell sick the same way they, were, they died, and got paralyzed for eight months. And I was left in the home um, just to die. And, and one morning, I was in the home when a, a man, a tall man, walked into the home and, and stretched forth his hands and asked me where my mom was, just pulled me from the bed and got me standing and walked off. And when my mom rushed to the room, he asked me what happened. I told my mom that the man that you met, my mom didn't see anybody. And up to now, we've not seen anybody uh, in that village like that man. I got healed miraculously. So I, I started finding out who this man is. Got converted in AOG and then um, served in the church, lived in the church for eight years. And I felt the Lord had called me into ministry. And my church was in the city. And I felt that God has sent me to the villages, the forest, to go and preach the gospel. My church said, no, you have to be here. And uh, I got a job, but I, I wanted to do something in the village. So I decided to go to the western part of Ghana, close to Ivory Coast. Highly demonic, highly aquatic place. So we started this church in the village, and like he said, um, the lady I was engaged to, her name is Senita. Uh, didn't like the place. She left me and, and married someone else. Um, it, was a, it was a difficult time for me, but I have decided to follow him. And so I, I stood on my ground and I followed Jesus. And we planted this church, um, raising leaders and sending them out. And, and we faced huge, huge difficulty because these are demonic areas, idol worshiping, ancestral worshiping uh, religion, where people, people cast spell and other things. But God has been so good. We've been able to plant nine churches, apart from the first one we've planted. So we have 10 churches, and, and we have about 11 pastors we're working with. And, and it's been so great in, spread, in the face of opposition and challenges and difficulties, the Lord each time came true for us, and we have become victorious and winning souls and planting churches for Christ. So that's a little bit. That's great. So you mentioned they planted nine churches in how many years? 14 years. Over 14 years. And tell us a little bit about how you pioneer one of those new churches, because it's a big commitment, isn't it? Just share a little bit about that. 
so what what I do is I, I am there in the village alone with Christ, and my wife is a school teacher, and she got she got a little bit coming in. So what we do is every year when we pray and we are convinced that it's time to move to a village to plant a church, my wife will go to the bank and take a loan. And for maybe a whole year, she will not get a salary. And then we will take the loan to buy a property, set up the place. And what we do is that we train these leaders and we find those who have heart and we send them to those villages. And the first church I established, uh, we take offerings and tithe and ministry support. And then we support these missionaries we send to these places. So our, our strategy is to train our own features and we were lucky about 10 years ago we got a connection to Tony Smith teachings on the net and so we had that teaching and that has been the only material we have in training our leaders until about three years ago we we met uh, Pastor Bill and we have some books so that has been how we planting our churches and and, and taking um, the villages where we we operate yeah and it's a big, a big commitment. Um, now, the good news is that uh, God has provided you with a beautiful wife and family who supports you in, uh, in ministry. Um, just tell us, we've got a couple of photos up there that uh, I think Pastor Bill took when he was uh, there with you recently, uh, earlier in the year. So tell us a, bit, a little bit like what the ministry there in Ghana is like and how the family support you there. Yeah, so... Um my wife, Macy, and I have uh, five children. Um, the first two kids are my adopted kids. I got them from this village. And with my wife, Macy, we have um, three. And so this Pastor Bill coming over. This visited one of the forest church. We, we went there, and there's the children uh, in this church. Uh, over then you see Pastor Bill and, and Cathy there with some of the kids. Um, my my wife, so that's what we do, and, and making sure of just uh, putting Pastor Bill up there and <laughs> in our village, and and so that's what we do. This is my office. This is where our office is, and we oh, we have Pastor Bill. As a <laughs> hey. And he was, he was surprised when he came to see because we, we put it there and we, we call him our father and he has no idea oh. about it. And everybody that visits me come to our place, I said, that is our ministry head. So, <laughs> and so we have him there. And so that is my office um, where our first church was established. And, and so my wife and my kids, our 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 help, the, the, the support we have, and they've been a blessing. Uh, my wife is ready and committed at all times. You know, sometimes I have to go to these villages for a month and, and leave them uh, the kids in her care. Um, she's ready to take care of the kids, do her job, and, and all the things. And recently, the Lord spoke to me. The kind of poverty we have in Ghana in the rural areas, the, the, the solution is to provide education. So we trusted the Lord because my wife is a teacher by profession. We set up a Christian school and uh, it's been good. About one year, we have about 140 kids in our school. And we have Pastor Bill and Cathy visiting the school. And what we do in our school is that we provide lunch every afternoon for this case. There's a fair school in this village that have lunch, and we are being flooded by kids because they want to have lunch every afternoon. And uh, Cathy was gracious enough to pay uh, for about uh, six months um, to, to feed about 100 kids in our school, and that was a turning point for us. And uh, Pastor Bill, I don't know if you realize this, but John was telling me earlier in the week, many pastors will not even go to these areas. Once their church gets to a certain size, they, they don't want to know about it. That's right, isn't it? And so they were really 
um, quite overwhelmed when you, when you came there. They'd say, "Wow, who's this pastor from Australia who would come and and uh, and so." Again, you, you pick up the heart of the, uh, just some of the conditions they face and yet being faithful to the call of Jesus. Pastor John, just before we, we finish up, have you got an encouragement or just a, a word on your heart that you'd just like to share with the people here this morning? Yes, um, I have something to share with you and a very little from Jeremiah chapter 20. If you have time and you go to read from the whole verse, but particular from verse 7 to 9, now, Jeremiah was preaching all over, and he had very strong words for the people of Judah who were in sin and all that. And, and the king at that time was against Jeremiah, and Jeremiah was chained into, in, into a tree and, and being going through a whole lot of difficulties. And then Jeremiah was tired, and he says that, God, I am tired. I, 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 I am being mocked every day because you have deceived me. You are not coming through for me. You are not delivering me. But then in verse 9, Jeremiah said, I feel like to shut up. I feel like not to preach again. I feel like not to mention your name again. But your word is like a fire in my heart. And, and it's like a fire in my bones. And any time I feel like to shut up because people are mocking and, and ridiculing me, I cannot shut up. And, and that is what we do. Sometimes myself and my wife, we feel like we are tired. We feel like it's too much for us. We feel like nobody cares about us. But any time we feel tired, there's something in our heart that, that, that we cannot keep quiet. So I don't know what you are going through. Maybe you feel tired. You've been giving for 40 years, 30 years. Maybe you've been coming to this church for a long time. You have an issue. Please do not give up. The Lord will come true for you. God bless you. Thank you so much.